Hi, my name is Ingo Müller and today I'm going to talk about serverless clusters, an alternative to serverless functions that we envision for interactive batch applications. With interactive batch applications we mean the following. An application is a batch application if it consists of jobs of interrelated tasks. MapReduce is a good example to explain this concept. Uh, the set of reduce tasks that in the second phase of the program uh, depends on the input of the set of map tasks in the first phase and can only start when that uh, when those tasks have finished. Uh, furthermore, we think of an application as interactive if there's a human in the loop such that the running time is in the order of 10 to 30 seconds at most. People have used serverless functions quite successfully for this type of application. And think, if you think about it, it seems like a really good match. In batch applications, there are individual jobs that represent workload spikes with a large idle time in between them. Now, you can use serverless functions by spawning functions to run the different tasks in a particular job and simply not run any functions in the idle time. And because the, user, the pricing model of serverless function is usage-based, you pay exactly uh, for the resources that you need. Furthermore, the serverless functions allow a huge amount of parallelism it's uh, typical to get several thousand function invocations at the same time, and we've shown in prior work that you can spawn 4,000 functions in as little as three seconds. So this immediate and practically endless auto-scaling of serverless functions uh, really helps with interactivity. Now, at the same time, it's also known that serverless functions have uh, limitations, and maybe the most severe one is that they cannot communicate directly. So two different serverless functions that are working uh, in the same job cannot exchange results of tasks uh, directly. What people have done instead is to communicate indirectly through some external service, for example, cloud, uh, cloud storage. And this works and often uh, achieves impressive results. However, we think that this is really a workaround or even a hack. Since the programming model of serverless function doesn't allow for indirect communications, batch applications are bound um, to fight the technology that they are running on. And similarly, there's also no batch start in the programming model, so the three seconds that I quoted earlier actually required a significant amount of engineering to achieve. In short, we claim that serverless functions are actually a misfit for interactive batch applications. And what we think should be used instead is a concept that we call serverless clusters. Serverless clusters like functions should be like functions in the sense that they should be elastic and they should also have a high level API that makes them simple to use. At the same time, they should behave a bit more like virtual machines. And in particular, they must be addressable such that different functions or different workers can exchange intermediate results. Also, we think that the um, programming model should be job oriented and in particular it should um, include a batch start mechanism. In short, we think that serverless clusters are the serverless design, serverless technology designed for batch applications. Now you could ask, why don't we just implement serverless clusters with VMs? And the answer is that this is currently not possible. The problem is that in, in the cloud, virtual machine deployments take in the order of 20 to 60 seconds. And since we were targeting interactive applications, uh, this VM startup time uh, may dominate the job run running time and drive, drive it outside of that interactive range. So at the moment, virtual machines are simply not elastic enough for interactive applications. However, we think that there are hope that there's hope. And I want to provide you with a few data points. Uh, so first, the serverless functions currently start in the order of 200 milliseconds. And uh, it's interesting that Amazon is uh, uh, revealing and, uh, and even sharing the, the technology that they're using to do that. It's a virtual machine manager called Firecracker that is able to start virtual machines in the order of 100 milliseconds. Now, um, it's also possible to start, to start an optimized Linux distribution in the order of one to two seconds and uh, unit kernels in much less time than that. So on the one side, we know how to start virtual machines, including operating system with a few seconds, but on the other side, cloud 
and the cloud-based virtual machine deployment takes an order of magnitude more. Now, why is that? And the honest answer is we don't know. At the moment, what we have done is to devise a set of research questions. And the first set of questions um, uh, is to find out where this overhead comes from. Is it the allocation of free resources? Is it the network setup? Is it some abstraction that is required to manage the cloud? Currently, we don't know. One way to study this is to study cluster management for on-premise clusters, for example, using Kubernetes, where the effects are similar and hence solution, solutions are hopefully also similar. Uh, maybe we, would, we will end up requiring hardware acceleration for the control plane, uh, similar like Microsoft Catapult is doing in order to speed up this process. And then there's a set of research questions around the programming model. How should the, the code be deployed? How should uh, jobs be submitted? How should communication be exposed? Uh, maybe existing systems such as YARN or Slurm do the trick. Maybe we need something new. Um, and we have a partial answer. In a different project, we built a runtime system called Photons, where different functions of the same client can run in the, se in the same process and thus communicate through a shared memory uh, mechanism. And that's not only faster, but also um, more, explicit, uh, more explicit to the user. And finally, we think that serverless accelerators would be interesting, but then we need to deal with the heterogeneity that come with accelerators. We need to make them reconfigurable fast enough and make them ready for multi-tenancy. And if you have followed this workshop from the beginning, you've seen that we are working in this direction too. We have this project called Lynx, which is a flexible shell for FPGAs that allows to virtualize some of the resources and hence addresses some of these questions. For this set of questions and the others that I mentioned, it would be great to get contributions from everybody such that serverless clusters can become a reality.